I wanted to start out today, I don't know how many of you are or are not familiar with Kickstarter. Uh, it's a website, uh, it's a crowdfunding website. What it does, people show up and they, they make videos or they, they distribute um, material for uh, a project they want to accomplish. Um, whether it's you know a, a program they're trying to design or an event they're trying to get together and they ask people to, to fund it, to back it, so they can get the fundraising to launch the project. And then they can go from there. And they, they put incentives up, like rewards if you donate so much, stuff like that. Um, there was uh, one of the big ones that really started getting a lot of uh, momentum for Kickstarter in the mainstream was uh, Tim Schafer. Uh, he's kind of the one of the Spielbergs, if you will, of game design. He said, I want to make a game. I want to crowdfund it so that I'm not dealing with publishers. I can do what I want. Uh I don't have to, to deal with that middle man to, to get the game to the fans. Uh, and he only asked for $400,000 to get the game done. Uh, but because it's Tim Schafer, everyone showed up, and he may, he may they funded the game for over $3, three million, rather. Um, in, in the reverse, in the flip side, one man got up there and started his own fund as a joke he, for potato salad. He had never made potato salad before and he wanted to buy the ingredients for potato salad and he was asking for $10 to make potato salad. Um, so a bit more um, on to, uh, back to Tim Schafer and his company Double Fine. When he did that, he took, clearly he got far more than what they were intending. This was meant to be a small scale project, but then the, they were funded so much they're like, okay, well now we're we're dealing with triple A budget again. We're you know we're dealing with a blockbuster again, so they had to redesign the game and they kept moving on uh, to to work on it. And so they eventually had an alpha build that they released to people. And what happened was is that people were you know they paid money for this the a uh, a beta version, if you will, uh, the, basically just a quite not quite unfinished. For, uh, qu yeah, not quite a finished version of the game. Um, and what happened was is that Tim Schafer was already making his money, and he just kind of stopped. And he said, no, that's well, we're done. And he goes, I mean, people are already paying for the game anyway, right? Um, and people got really upset with that, except that that's not what happened. <laughs> That's the rumor that was attached to it. Tim Schafer got his game out, but because it had increased so much in scale, he released the first half of the game out. And people were like, well, you need more money to finish it. And he was like, yeah, but when you buy the game, we have enough money to finish the game. <laughs> and that's how he funded his game. He adapted to his circumstances because of what had been provided to him. Um, a lot of the, especially game projects on Kickstarter, uh, some stuff does fail and some stuff get really upset. The... Uh, uh, with the research I did, I want to say it was a smaller project by a developer called Darkforge, which has just disappeared into the void, uh, is actually the one that they almost had a completely finished product, and all of a sudden they just stopped. They just didn't make it anymore. All their stuff went down. They even took it out of the store, so you couldn't even buy this this unfinished version. And so many of these, you know, the, the a lot of the material I was looking at was for, for games, because someone had already consolidated a lot of the, the game projects from Kickstarter into one document. Some of them have quit completely. They've just ran out of money, and then just the only excuse they could give was, this is hard. And they moved on with their lives. And the people are like, you know, it's like, I contributed money already. I should have a, I should have a game. I should have this. People, they aren't delivering on their rewards. And what accountability is about, this, this theme that we've been dealing with in Infuse, it's not just about who's to blame, but it's about owning and adapting to your circumstances. Blaming someone is easy. I mean, clearly these developers who did not count the cost, as we you know would say here, uh, and then just completely flopped on delivering a game to people who had paid money for a game. They, you know, they they fell short of the mark. They couldn't deliver on the stuff. But blame isn't very useful. It's a reactive measure. It's not proactive. Accountability is what help you realize in the actual circumstances themselves. Adapt to it. Because blame, at the end of the day, doesn't solve the problem. But adapting to your situation does. Uh, to, I mean, as far as blame goes, I mean, just throwing blame around. You know, we've had the, the issue with uh, the gorilla and the gator these past couple of weeks. Where people, you know, I mean, you log on Facebook, and you've got people blaming, you know, where were the parents? By some reports, the, the 
you know, they, they immediately want to blame the parents or the zookeepers or anything like that. It's not enough that tragedy has struck. Just be with the people who have had loss, whether it was, you know, the tragedy. Yes, I'll, I'll say that the gorilla dying was a tragedy, albeit not as great a tragedy as human life being lost. But, you know, those people have been with that gorilla for 14 years. Imagine if you had a, a dog for 14 years that you suddenly had to put down because he'd attacked someone and when he had not done that before. Same thing with the kid. You know, these parents, they have to pack up that kid's stuff and go home, and they don't have the kid to go with the stuff. There's no room for blame because it doesn't fix the issue. Uh, to move it to, a, I think, a better example for what I want to talk about, over in Flint, Michigan, with the radioactive, filthy water that they had over there. When it finally came out that, yeah, they'd screwed up and they'd let this filthy water get into the drinking system that people had been drinking it for weeks, they spent months blaming other departments. Everyone was blaming each other on who was going to fix it, trying to say who was going to fix it, instead of just fixing it. Well, the problem just compounded itself. Instead of just, let's fix it and we'll figure out who's going to pay for it afterward. So, But it's easy, again, to blame, to, to play the, the uh, armchair quarterback or armchair city councilman, if you will, from that perspective on that. Like I said before, Tim, Tim Schaefer, he, he had adapted to his situation when he suddenly wasn't going to be able to meet his deadlines to the people who had backed his project. He, he adapted. He changed that up, said, hey, it's going to be delayed. Hey, it's going to come out in two parts, but that's because we're rearranging how the, the funds are working, and he still got the game out to people, despite the fact that a lot of people being upset with how he did it still got a rumor around that the, uh, the, the project had failed completely and that he had just abandoned it. You can't blame your circumstances for what happens, though, for your, your behavior, though. As Christians, we have to remember that we have to still be Christians. We have to do what we've been told to do, to be like Christ at all times. We can't, you know, it's easy for us to, you know, to, to blame our circumstances. Well, you know, he was really rude to me first. Or he was, or, you know, that's just uh, my pet peeve. People like to, to claim their pet peeves. But that's an excuse for suddenly acting judgmentally or in an unchristian-like manner. And that doesn't cut it because at the end of the day, if we're Christians here but only react unchristianly here, oh, well, that's our fault. Well, no, I mean, it, let's look at Westboro Baptist Church. That's what people think of Christians is these days. Like, we love you so long as you conform to what we want to do. But they have that hateful attitude. You know, I saw just this morning... The uh, uh, another article up on Facebook. How the Westboro has published that they plan to go protest the deaths, uh, the funerals of the deaths of these people that died in the Orlando shooting. Meanwhile, the person, <laughs> this, that's not a Christian attitude, and we can't blame. They can't say, well, they shouldn't have been horrible sinners, and we wouldn't be reacting like this. They can't blame that because they're still responsible to act like Christians in that. Meanwhile, the person who had shared the article was berating them for not having a Christian attitude. And she, despite being a lesbian, had a greater understanding of a Christly attitude than the Westboro Baptist people. We have to understand that we can't blame our circumstances. You know, we have to adapt to it. You know, we, if the right hand offends, you cut it off. If the muscle's weak, you train it and get stronger. We have to be better Christians at all times. We can't blame our circumstances. We have to be better than what they expect of us. And to return back to Zach Brown, the man who asked for $10 to make potato salad, he got funded too. He made over $55,000 to make potato salad. And delivering on his commitments, he said that one of his things was uh, any supporters, he would list off their names on video while he made the potato salad. It took him four and a half hours to recite the names of his 6,000 backers <laughs> while he made his first batch of potato salad. But he pocketed none of that money. He made his first batch, and then he threw back in, this is back in 2014, I'm a little out of date on this one, but he threw potato stock, where he actually in the, uh, I want to say it was the, it was somewhere in Ohio. I can't remember the city. I apologize. He threw potato stock where he got a bunch of people together and there was a Feed the Homeless initiative where they made potato salad. Everyone brought their own home recipes and they all made them. It was Feeding the Homeless and the Less Fortunate in that city area. 
And anything that was left over, he found a way because apparently Kickstarter is really hard about raising money for, for non-profit organizations. They're worried about it. He still found a way around that. Any, any that was left over from, from that 55 grand, he still got to, to homeless charities. He still did more with what he'd been given than these other people who, were, who asked for more, got it, and then still couldn't deliver. And I want to, I really want to uh, leave you with that, the idea that, you know, we've been given something really great and that we're here on the Sabbath, that we have Christ, that he's invited us into his family, and that we need to do more with the bounty that we've received. <laughs>